Sauropods are the biggest animals to have ever lived on land. But with such massive bodies, long necks, and tiny brains, how did they survive for so long? A diverse team of scientists has tried to answer these questions by building a 60-foot model of a Mementosaurus, a sauropod dinosaur known for its impossibly long neck. The model is the centerpiece of a new exhibit at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Scientific American got a sneak preview. Uh, we've learned a lot about what went on the outside, how to flesh out the skeletons, and how the thing would have looked. But there's still some questions about how these huge dinosaurs lived. Like, did they hold their neck stretched out in front or up vertically like a giraffe? And we feel that some of them may have had long necks that went straight up, but in general, that if you try to put the bones together in that configuration, they just don't fit. And a much better and much more reasonable idea is that it's an energetic strategy so that they could just stand there with their necks straight out and be sort of like a lawnmower and just go back and forth and back and forth, eating along the ground without having to move their feet. Well, it sounds like a good strategy for grazing. These long necks didn't come without problems. For one, Pumping blood 30 feet out to the brain requires a huge heart. A long neck also makes breathing a challenge. Scientists think massive lungs must have been needed to move air through such a long windpipe. If you, the volume of your windpipe is bigger than the volume of your lung, then you suffocate. So this is the famous example of the snorkel, like a, a, a snorkeler cannot have a very long snorkel because our lung is too small. And so you need to have a very large lung, and that lung is primitively present in reptiles to a certain extent, but especially pronounced in birds. For all the physiological challenges, there were definitely some advantages of being the biggest animal on the block. For example, fending off pesky T. rexes. When you're this big, then you don't have a problem anymore. Uh, but of course, you have to get there in the first place. And getting there means growing up fast. Sauropod eggs were only about nine pounds each. Adults were more than a thousand times that weight. So to grow that much, sauropods had to eat a lot. Well, you're talking about a lot of food, because these, especially during the explosive growth phase, because some of these animals were growing at over 10 pounds a day for a very long period of their life. This cube right behind me represents the volume of food one of these animals would have to eat in a single day, and it's about 1,000 pounds. How can we be so certain about all of these flesh and bone figures? Paleontologists no longer have to rely only on new fossil discoveries. A lot of long-standing mysteries about extinct animals have recently been solved, thanks to cutting-edge technology. This isn't the sort of bone rush era science where uh, paleontologists would go out in the field, you know, the curators say, find me the biggest apatosaurus you can find, you know, bring it back, we'll put it up in the museum. Now we're, you know, cutting into dinosaur bones to look at their microstructure. We're laser scanning bones to manipulate skeletons. We're looking at the anatomy of living animals to try and make inferences about uh, how these animals live. And these new tools are changing the pace of paleontology. As Brian Sweetek points out, this exhibit is already out of date. On the uh, sauropod dinosaur behind me, there's a cutaway, so you can see uh, sort of its internal anatomy. And if you look at the femur muscles, or the muscles that are attached to the thigh, they're actually a little bit thin. This dinosaur would have been a bit more chunky in the backside because a few weeks ago, paleontologists discovered that there's a muscle that connected from the top of the thigh to the base of the tail. So it would have had a little more junk in the trunk than we actually see on exhibit. Outdated or not, the thin-legged Mementosaurus will be on display at the Natural History Museum through next January. For Scientific American, I'm Katherine Harmon.